Today we're going to look at the BUN to creatinine ratio and the fracture of excreted sodium and how it relates to diagnosis of pre- and intrarenal failure. Remember that a normal BUN to creatinine ratio is 15 to 1. When we look at elevation and decrease in the ratio, it helps us diagnose pre-renal and intrarenal failure. An increase in the 15 to 1 to ratio is seen with pre-renal and a decrease with intrarenal. It's good to remember that pre-renal is one of the major causes of acute kidney injury as well, and acute tubular necrosis being one of the major causes of intrarenal failure. We'll first quick talk about the normal pathway of both urea and creatinine. Remember that urea is both filtered or secreted in the urine and absorbed back into the blood. Creatinine, however, is simply majority filtered and left into the urine. For that reason, we have a normal 15 to 1 ratio, meaning that we usually have much more urea than creatinine in the blood because some of the urea is naturally reabsorbed back in the blood while majority of the creatinine is excreted through the urine. Again, majority of the urea is going to be reabsorbed in the peritubular capillaries. This usually occurs in the proximal convoluted tubule. Urea, along with other ions, are reabsorbed and creatinine continue to move down the nephron and be excreted as urine, whereas majority of that urea is reabsorbed and some of it moved as urine. When the kidneys lack perfusion, as seen with pre-renal failure, they induce common pathways to maintain their GFR, such as afferent arterial vasodilation and efferent arterial vasoconstriction and also induction of the RAS system. That will increase, well, more so maintain their GFR. However, over time, the GFR slows down. So because of that, our creatinine continues to move down as filtrate. But because of this slowing GFR, this allows for more time of diffusion for urea to be reabsorbed in the paratubular capillaries. For that reason, we have more urea in the blood when compared to creatinine. So we have an increase in our urea to creatinine ratio, meaning we have higher levels of our urea and almost normal levels of our creatinine. One of the major differences in pre-renal and intrarenal failure is the maintenance of tubular function. For instance, in pre-renal failure, the tubular function is maintained. What I mean by that is the kidneys maintain their function or their form. So they continue to do what they do best, which is absorb our ureas, BUN, and filtrate the creatinine. The solute is moving slower through the kidney, so we absorb more of the urea, hence the increased ratio. In intrarenal failure, this tubular function is not maintained. Therefore, the kidney does less of what it does best, basically. So we get less absorption of urea as BUN and less creatinine, so we have increased levels in the blood. Hence, this ratio is going to get closer in intrarenal failure. So with intrarenal failure, our tubular structure is not maintained. And because of that, the kidneys lose their ability to absorb urea as they normally do and secrete creatinine as they normally do. So our creatinine levels will rise in the blood because we cannot filter creatinine as well into the urine. Along with this, our urea levels, which are normally absorbed and normally higher, are now excreted more than absorbed. So we get more secretion than absorption. Therefore, our levels of BUN are marginally increased, if not decreased, and our creatinine levels in the blood are greatly increased. Now our ratio is getting closer. Lastly, another test you might see in the ICU or ER is the fraction of excreted sodium or a phenol level. This looks at the ratio of filtered sodium to excreted sodium. Again, the same concept arrives. In acute tubular necrosis or intrarenal failure, the tubular structure is not maintained, therefore we reabsorb less sodium and we excrete more. So a fraction of less than 1% would be pre-renal because we continue to absorb and excrete potassium, or sorry, sodium correctly. 
and intrarenal or acute tubular necrosis would be greater than 1% because we lose the ability to properly absorb and secrete sodium. So how clinically relevant are these exams? Well, BUN and creatinine have been one of the most common things looked at in acute renal failure, but it's important to know that increased creatinine and urea can be from other things, such as increased urea with uh, possibly protein intake, dehydration, liver disease, and even advanced age has been proven to have increased urea levels. Plasma creatinine concentration can also be influenced by things such as trauma and from increased steroid use. When comparing the two, creatinine has much more of a stable rate of production um, and therefore it might be a better server for a diagnosis of renal failure. Uh, creatinine also does take some time to actually increase its levels, so it might have better application when looking at um, the overall chronic disease state and assessing how well the kidneys are doing on a long-term basis. Research is now looking at other biomarkers that are more sensitive to the kidneys themselves, such as troponin being sensitive to the heart. Thank you. Comment for questions. Mm -hmm.